We'll start this off in a similar way we often do with these types of problems, properties of logarithms. Insert an e to the ln so that we can drop that exponent down in front of the logarithm. This is a very common technique. And part of the reason we do it is to take advantage of the Taylor series, the power series for e to the x. It's not just x that we have here, it's x times natural log x, but it fits into the formula all the same. To keep going, we do have to switch the integral and the summation sign, which you can't always do, even though quite often you can. I made a video you can check out in the right-hand corner addressing this issue. Now that we've switched these, let's pull out everything that only has an n attached. That way all of the x's are inside of our integral. This is probably also a good place for me to point out that you might have to worry about some domain issues when you're doing things like this. That zero as the lower limit might give you some heebie-jeebies. We'll just let it go. And here comes really the challenge of this integral. How on earth are we going to do this? Spoiler alert, I'm not going to use the gamma function. I'm going to do a technique from another video that I've done the Feynman trick, or differentiating under the integral. You can check out a full video on that topic here in the right-hand corner, but we did a really similar technique, starting with just x to the n. Notice we can integrate this without much issue, just regular old add one to the power, divide by the new power, and evaluate using the fundamental theorem of calculus. What gets really interesting about this is when we differentiate both sides. Specifically, partial differentiating with respect to n. Glossing over some of the details, what this trick allows us to do is slip the differentiation operator inside the integral and differentiate under the integral sign. Now be careful here, the variable of differentiation is n. So remember your rules for differentiating when the variable is the exponent. The derivative of x to the n with respect to n is x to the n natural log x. And we can differentiate the right hand side in the normal way either with the quotient or reciprocal rule. And you might say, so what? We only have a single power of natural log. We have n of them in our original problem. Well, let's just differentiate this n times. It's a little harder to see if you actually differentiate n times and multiply everything together. So this is what it would look like after differentiating 100 times. Or if you differentiate k times, you can really see the distinction between the powers of x and the powers of the natural logarithm. And at this point, I would just let k equal n to get this. And in my opinion, that's a pretty cool expression just for that integral alone, but that was not our original problem. Our original problem was this sum with this integral inside. So now that we have this, let's put it all together. And nice things happen. Effectively, the n factorials cancel out. We get this really adorable sum. You can start writing it out. And if you put this into a computer without using too many terms, you'll get a really nice approximation. You, of course, can verify that this does converge by one of the tests from Calc 2, which sort of justifies all of the techniques we've been doing. And if you thought this integral was fun, I promise you, you're going to find this one even more enjoyable. I'll see you in that one.